Hi guys, this is Claudia here from Metal Days 2016 for We Don't Care and this is Propane. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having us. So, um, with all that I read about you, there's so many different styles that seem to be yours or not or you changed. What do you say about that? Well, I always saw Propane as being a bit of a crossover band. So, yeah. we never really played a purest, purest style styles right. of music so it's a bit hardcore it's a bit metal uh, sometimes it's a, it's a bit thrash but um, we kind of blend all of our influences together to create I think a little bit of our own style you know so when, when people hear propane they know it's a we have a very um, certain type of sound you know that's easily recognizable and does that also have to do with uh, your gear and with the ideas you share with your sound technician um, I think it has a little bit to do with that. I mean, we, we've been using a lot of the same gear for a very long time, so that, that really helps um, develop uh, uh, your own sound a little bit. But I think it's more just in the players, and, um, and a lot of it's in, I think, in the vocals also. It gives it a certain style. And uh, I have my own, my own way of singing, you know, which is very different from a lot of um, screamers in the business so it, uh, I just kind of have my own sound which I think is cool. So uh, since you mentioned it and I'm always interested in vocals, yeah. um, how did you go about developing your style really? Is it like you were trying to do stuff other people also did or you just tried out things? Well I, I think for me it's like it's two things a lot of it has to do with um, um, the amount of passion behind what you're singing about and um, and also when you sing um, from your diaphragm um, you sort of you you don't lose your uh, your voice your the, the identity yeah. of your voice no pressure here yeah so if you if you if you're a throat singer um, and that's why a lot of these guys sound the same yeah. it's just a texture right. and but there's no identity i mean so you can you can literally listen to a lot of these guys and if you didn't know who, who was who mm -hmm. you would never even be able to guess who it was so with my with the way I sing, which is more from the diaphragm and, and with a lot of decibels, um, it sounds like me, you know, and for for better or worse, um, but it sounds like me at the end of the day. And I think that's what's cool because when people hear propane, they instantly know that's okay. That's 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 propane. That's Gary singing. You know? And uh, did you also have like a classical formation or something on that on singing in general? Um, no, I'm I, um, I'm completely self-taught as as a vocalist. I, I also I also sing melodic, um, but not not a lot in, in propane. But I also I sing that as well. So it's a style that um, I've been been doing a lot over the over the years. But it's not something that I'm commercially known for. So, but um, that's that's a, a different style um, uh, entirely, and um, it's also. It also comes from the diaphragm when you sing melodic, um, but you don't distort, and that, that's really the only difference. And, and then you you're hitting keys and notes, and but with propane it's it's sort of the same. It's like screaming in key, believe it or not. Um, so it's not just um, screaming in the same key over all of the material. You know the keys are constantly changing. That's that's why I asked. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> because it's really different from what other people do, and right. that's. You know, worthwhile asking. <laughs> and uh, with propane, when you're traveling a lot, I guess, then is it that you meet the same people all over the place or you get to know other people as well, new people? Uh, sometimes we see the same people over and over. You know, we kind of develop friendships that way. It's really funny, like uh, just over the past five years that I've been in the band, I've really made a lot of close friends on this side of the world. Um, and then we also meet some new people. You know, I think um, I think we're we're constantly turning new people onto our music and and uh, constantly meeting new you know fans and and some of these people become friends mm -hmm. through that you know just sharing you know sharing a beer and hanging out with somebody for five minutes can turn into a lifelong friendship yeah. for all you know. <laughs> and uh, can you like talk about the scene that you come from yourself like? when you started to get into music? I, I started getting into metal 
when I was probably 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. And uh, I got into Metallica and then Pantera and then Slayer. Mm -hmm. That was really where, where I came from. So really, I come from a lot of the thrash uh, element of the, of the metal scene, you know. And uh, what was the scene like? Was there like a lot of places to hang out and a lot of people doing concerts? And was there a possibility to, to play? It's funny, you know, like as I grew up, the scene, uh, the scenes where I moved around to got better and better. You know, I'm from New York yeah. and I was too young at the time that I lived in New York to really be a part of the scene that was going on there, even though it was thriving. Uh, and then I moved to uh, a small town in Florida. The scene was, I was getting a little older, but there really weren't as many cool places to hang out. And then uh, when I got old enough to kind of leave the nest, I moved to Orlando. And that's, that scene was really thriving at that time. And uh, I really came into my own in, in the Orlando scene. There were a lot of great bands, great musicians, uh, people that I'm still friends with to this day. And, uh, and that's really where, where I, I kind of came into my own was in the Orlando scene. The scene was great. Lots of places to play and uh, they would take local shows and mm -hmm. put them in big venues and cool. give the tickets away for free and made it all ages shows. Mm -hmm. So you could get a lot of exposure that way. Right. So you had also then to depend on the merch? Yeah, like, a, lot, a lot of the times, <laughs> yeah, you really did. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of young men starting out, they have the feeling like, this is it. This will be what I want to do, like rock star, and they think they know what the job is. But what exactly is your job? What what are you doing despite standing on a on a you know <laughs> stage? Um, well, I, I handle all the business for the band, also. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sort of the manager mm -hmm. without taking a commission for it. You know, so I <laughs> yeah I, I I handle all the band's business. Um, This is, it's not something that I really set out to do. It wasn't never one of my goals to be a professional musician. I started just being in bands and having fun playing music. And uh, for one reason or another, uh, it started to take off. And um, um, I had other plans in life, you know, and, and there were other businesses that I was involved in that I just kind of left because I could always do those. And I, and I said to myself, well, When I'm, while I'm young, I should probably pursue music for a little while because I had a good opportunity to do it. And, um, and I, I never went back to the, those other jobs. So <laughs> it's been full time for me since 1992. Mm -hmm. yep. Since you started. And it's, yeah, and it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of work. You know, people don't realize how much work goes into it. You know, and and um, it's, it's really a full time thing. You know, you're always planning the next course for the band and 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 that never really stops you know there's always it, you go through your recording or, or your writing phases recording phases and then what's the next tours that we're going to do and you have to really keep it going because you, you can't or, or we, we we never had the luxury to like slow down our momentum and we just had to keep the ball rolling all the time and it's been that way for 25 years now you know And uh, I don't take it for granted. I think it's, a, it's an awesome job. You know, it's something that uh, I wouldn't trade for anything else. And, um, you know, it's, at this point, it's, it's hard to, to judge when uh, the, the end of the, the road is going to be for the band. People ask me all the time, but, you know, 25 years into the game, you know, hopefully we'll have a few more years left for the band, you know. And then, you know, we'll go back to uh, where, whatever. We go our, our separate ways and bid each other farewell. And, We'll do 20, We'll do 25 you. farewell tours. <laughs> yeah, maybe with this, with the, maybe maybe supporting the Scorpions 75th farewell tour. <laughs> 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 Something like that. You know, you know I, mean? I want to be on the show. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, I want. So we'll just keep it going. Even even when it's, it's a farewell tour, we'll just keep it going forever. It's the never-ending farewell tour. We're actually on it, doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you you did that in '92, also, right? Exactly. Was right from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, I always thought it would be cool to start a band and, and, uh, we'll, and just plan one show. So it would actually be our first show, but it would also be our last show. And it would also be our reunion show. Yeah. And, uh, and then we would cancel the show. Oh. <laughs> so we have all the elements into one. Yeah. The most extreme band ever. And it's probably the shortest gig ever. 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 
So, um, <laughs> is there anything that you would like to recommend young people who are starting out bands, like what to do or don't do some stuff? Um, I would say work really hard at it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say have integrity. Don't let people take things from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and be your own person. Be your own. Find your own sound, yeah. and go with that. And don't go with the trend because the trend is short lived. And if you want to stand the test of time, don't go with the trend. Mm -hmm. So, do you go on stage and you are like yourself or? Is there like a stage persona? I mean, of course, there's a stage persona. I think like anybody that has um, anybody that's on stage in any respect, theater people, you know, they, they have to become an actor all of a sudden, and it's, it's, some of that is in in you know the stage performance with a band. Some of it's me though. I mean, I think you know an actor in a movie is channeling something from his own his own mind, you know, his own personal self. You know, I guess, uh, but there there is. You know, there is some element of, of acting, though, because it's uh, I don't know. I always think like you know, if you're uh, if you're the same person on stage as you are off stage, you better be really interesting off stage. <laughs> if Probably. You're interesting if, if you're interesting on stage, <laughs> yeah. If you're boring on stage, then, <laughs> then well, there's no me. yeah, that's no helping. Sorry. Be like, oh no, I swear he's not so boring off stage. It's just yeah. You know. But I, I, I get I get what what you're saying. For, you know, for some people, it's an alter ego. You know, for me, for me, it's an alter ego. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm off stage. I'm, I'm generally pretty quiet and and, and a bit introverted, I guess. And um, and on stage, I get to be uh, another part of that the personality that um, is is different from you know just most of the hours of my day. You know, and that's that's pretty cool. And um, it 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 kind of makes you complete, I guess you could say. And um, as far as any advice for younger people wanting to, to go into the music business, I would say just, you know, if you, go with your passion. If your passion, if, it's, it, and that's a lesson in life in general, no matter what you want to do in life, the, the passionate ones succeed. The ones that are just going along and they, they figure, ah, I'll play some music and, and, and I'm going to be famous because I'm just playing, playing music, it'll never happen. You have to really feel it. You have to feel it in your bones every every waking hour, and it does. So it doesn't matter what you do in life. If you have passion in what you're doing, you will definitely succeed. And music also. So um, my question that I put on every interview, so it's also here, right? Is what makes somebody become an artist? Like, what is an artist? Are you an artist? Um. I consider myself to be an artist because, uh, you know, we're we're writing music and um, we're doing things which are um, subjective, and I think that is that in itself is art, you know. So um, and art, you know, an our form of art can be very temperamental, you know. So and it's driven by the, the band members of any particular lineup that we have and it's also fan driven as well so you know I take a lot of their sentiment in mind when writing new stuff um, we, we never want to let ourselves down but we never want to let the fans down either so there's a lot of things to consider when writing new music as artists um, and um, you know 25 years into the game we're, we're very pleased with our accomplishments And um, you know we're we're happy that you know we're still here, being very well received by the fans, and um, that's it. Yeah. So thank you very much for the interview, and thank you very much. have safe travels. Oh, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.